Hi everyone and welcome to this lecture on resistors and resistor color codes. What we're looking at this time are different types of resistors, uh, different physical sizes, and we're also going to look at how we read the values of them to figure out, well, how much resistance they have. So have a look at this picture I've taken. We range from a pretty big resistor over here and we keep getting smaller down to some really tiny ones like this one down here, which is uh, like less than a millimeter in each direction. Now, the reason we would have different sizes is not so much to get different values of resistance. I mean, this little one right down here, that could be anywhere from like 100 ohms up to 10 million ohms. So it's not so much the, si the physical size of the resistor that determines how much resistance it is. It's just the internal um, composition of the resistive materials that determines that. Rather, the physical size is all about how much um, power we're going to be using. Now we haven't actually spoken about power before, but if you were to get the voltage across a resistor, multiply it by the current going through it, that will tell you how much power it is using. If we're going to be using a lot of voltage with a lot of current, you're going to be using a lot of power, therefore you need a big resistor. A small resistor would just heat up too much and it wouldn't be able to handle it. If we're using um, small battery powered devices, um, like for example a little Arduino circuit or something like that, then little resistors like all these guys are perfectly fine because we're simply not, they're not heating up so we don't need big resistors. Now let's look at the different values. <clears throat> so I was, I was mentioning color codes before, but not all of these resistors have color codes. For example, this one is so big that instead of requiring a code for you to then look up, we can simply write it on the, um, the device. So let's have a look at this. First of all, it says 5W. That indicates it can handle 5 watts. Now we'll do some calculations later on to do with power, which is measured in watts. But if we were to exceed 5 watts for this particular one, it would get too hot and it would break down, which is bad. Now the 5R6, well, what does that actually mean? So I haven't actually mentioned this before, but this is one type of convention that they use to represent resistor values. What they're actually doing here is they're putting a letter in the place of the decimal point. So if I was to go 5 and then get rid of that R, replace it with a decimal point, then do 6 and then we move the R across to the end, it tells us that it's 5.6 ohms, the R representing ohms. If this was a K instead of an R, it would be 5K6. What we do is we replace that letter with a decimal point and then put the K over here. That would tell us it's 5.6 K. Now this isn't a convention that I really like to use at all. Um, I, my understanding of why they came up with it was because, well, sometimes decimal points can be missed. If you miss a decimal point, then the value completely changes. Um, however, I, I haven't had any problem with def decimal points before, so I always just use the decimal point. Now the last piece of this puzzle is the J. This tells us the tolerance. So we could have tolerances of our resistors of plus or minus 1%, plus or minus 5%, um, 10%, 20%, and, um, and other variations even in between those. So what that means is if I was to have a resistor that was 100 ohms, oops, that's percent, 100 ohms, and it was plus or minus 1%, that means 1% of 100 is just 1, so that means this resistor could be as high as 101 ohms or as low as 99 ohms. Oops, keep doing that. <clears throat> if it was 10%, 10% of 100 is 10, so it could be as high as 110 ohms and as low as 90 ohms. So that's where the tolerance comes in. If you want to be sure that your resistor is going to be very close to what you want it to actually be, you'd have to get a, um, a resistor with a really low tolerance, as in very close to zero. Now something else here is most of these resistors have legs coming out of them, as you can see here. But these two little guys don't have legs. Now when you're um, experimenting as a hobbyist, you're, you're building your circuits, you'll most probably be using these ones with legs coming out of them, because they're really easy to plug into um, prototyping boards or to, to make put into circuit boards. However, when you're going to go into mass production, so for example, 
Um, this is one of my Kickstarter projects that I made, which is um, a little gaming thing that you plug into an Arduino. All of this stuff, there's no components coming through the other side. It's all surface mount components. So with surface mount components, not only does it mean your board can be smaller because the components are smaller, but it also means that manufacturing is pretty cheap. The reason for that is the resistors will um, get put on by little robot arms, if you like, little suction vacuums. It puts all the components on top, and then this goes along and gets put into an oven, and the oven melts all the solder, and it melts all the components on top. If you compare that to, say, one of these types of circuit boards, so here's some resistors here. What we have to do in this case is we have to physically form this. So we're going to have to bend the legs over. Once we've bent them, we get our circuit board. Plug the resistor in to wherever it's going, if I can get it. So we put the resistor in, push it down, turn it over, cut the legs off and, and actually solder it in there. So you can see it's quite a bit more of a process. So these different types of resistors, they certainly have their place. When I was prototyping this, I just used um, the through hole components with the legs. And then when I went to the production, it was just like that for the surface mount. Okay, what about these colors though? What are all these about? So this one has brown, red, brown, and then a little way apart from that, as in spaced a little bit further than these other ones, we've got the gold band. So for this particular one, the first three colors represent the value of resistance. The last color represents the tolerance. So I've come up with a handy conversion chart for you, or a, a lookup table. And in fact, you guys can download this as a PNG file. Um, so as you're watching the, this uh, video, just up to the top right, um, is a link for resources. You can download this and print it out. So that should be pretty handy for you. Now I've given both the four band resistor um, little conversion chart and also the five band. All of these resistors here you see are four, four bands. They've got four colors. So what do the colors mean? <clears throat> well, over the here we've got 10 different numbers and 10 different colors, starting from black, which is zero, all the way through to white, which is nine. If we go through this example I've got here, we've got brown, blue, red, and then gold. So it doesn't look too much like gold, but that's gold. The first three digits of a four band resistor represent the actual value of the resistor. So let's have a look. Brown is one, so we write down the number one. Blue is six, so we write down the number six. And then finally, we have the red one. Now we don't just write down the number two for red, this is actually our multiplier. The easiest way to think of this is this is how many zeros you need to tack on the end. So we need to tack on the end two zeros. So our resistance for that is 1,600 ohms or 1.6K. Or if we go with the other convention that I don't so much like using, it would be 1K6. All means the same thing. <clears throat> now what if we use this example here? So this resistor is a brown, red, brown, and then it's got a gold band. So brown, red, brown. Brown is one, red is two, and the last one, remember this is how many zeros you need to add. We've got the number one, so we need to add one zero. So it's 120 ohms. Now it also had a gold band. The gold band, we need to look down here for our tolerance. A gold band represents plus or minus 5%. So the actual resistance of this thing with a tolerance of 5% could be 5% above 120 ohms or 5% below 120 ohms. What if we had brown, red, black? How much would that be? Well, brown is 1, red is 2, black is 0. So essentially we're saying put in zero zeros. Another way of saying that is put in no zeros. So just leave them out. It would be 12 ohms. What about the five band resistors? Well, I showed you this pack just before because I took a resistor out of it. Um, this is how I'd buy pa packs from my local, my local electronics shop. So I guess they don't really sell them individually because they don't really make too much money from that. So they sell them in packs of 10 or something like that. Now these actually have five bands. 
and it says here that this is 51k. So let's see if this story checks out. It's 51k and it's got green, brown, black, red, and then set apart a little bit is brown. So these four are going to make up the value. So we have a look, green is 5, brown is 1, black is 0, and red is 2, which means add two zeros. So when we're talking about the 5 band version, the first three are simply whatever number it is, so 5, 1, 0. This fourth one here that makes up the value, that's your multiply, that's where you add so many zeros, in this case it's 2. So it's 51,000, or 51k, just as the package said, so it all works out. Now the last one, the brown, that's the tolerance. So if we look up brown over here, the tolerance is plus or minus 1%. So this value, in fact, could be 1% above that or 1% below that. All right, so that basically concludes this little um, lecture on, on looking at resistors, the different types of resistors, where we would use different sizes uh, for different applications, and also how you can read resistor color codes.